Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the Comms Prepper with my second video of my playlist series on Morning Stars TriStar MPP Charge Controller. In my previous video we did a kind of unboxing, opened up the lid here to let you see under the hood, and we set the dip switches here to pre-configure this unit for my configuration out at the retreat location. Uh, something I didn't mention in the last video, which is important to note, when setting the dip switches in these units, you don't want any power applied to it. You want to set the dip switches first, get it pre-configured, then you can connect the battery bank and then the solar panels to the unit. In this configuration here, I'm using my ham radio power supply to provide 12 volts to the unit on the battery contacts as if it was connected to my off-grid system at the retreat location. And the purpose of this is to provide power to the unit. So when we get to the programming stage, of course, the unit is turned on and we can read and write to the unit. So I'm going to pause here. We're going to roll over to the Camtasia desktop recorder on the PC, and we're going to walk through the process of downloading the software from Morningstar, configuring your network card, the Ethernet card on your computer, to talk between the computer and the controller and demonstrate that we can read and write to the controller, proving that we have communications between the two devices. In this video, we're only going to cover the communications piece between the PC and the charge controller, and my next video will actually cover the programming specifics to match this charge controller up to my specific off-grid solar power system at the retreat location. So let's go ahead and roll over to the Camtasia desktop recorder. All right, guys, here we are on the desktop. I have my Google search open here for Morningstar charge controllers, and we'll go to their corporate websites. We're going to come up here to products. We're going to come down to MPP charge controllers and select the TriStar MPP controller. And here we can get the manual and into the support library documents. Now I have the 60 amp version that you can see here, but there's a 45 and a 30 amp version. For the manual, you would just click here and it will download the manual for you. And in the support library documents, you can click that and come over to software and download MSView right here by right clicking and doing save link as. And of course, I've been throwing this out to the desktop. Now I've already done the install to make sure everything was working before I started making the video. But if you're up to this point, I'm pretty sure you can install some software. Now that we have the manual and the software installed, we're going to configure the computer to actually communicate with the charge controller. So I'm going to come over here in Windows and open up my network sharing, change my adapter settings, and I'm going to disable my Wi-Fi connection to the Internet because I need to set up a new IP address. My Ethernet cable, this is the hard cable on the back of your computer, is now connected between the computer and the charge controller. So I'm going to go ahead and enable the Ethernet connection. Now I have a link with the standard cable between the two devices. In the manual for the charge controller on page 53, it gives you the default IP information for the charge controller. We're going to have to go in and configure our network card to have a similar IP address and be on the same subnet. So the IP address for the charge controller as shipped from the factory is 192.168.1.253. Here's the subnet mask, the default gateway, and the primary DNS server. So with this information, we can now come over to our Ethernet adapter, click on Properties, scroll down here to IP4, hit the Properties, and I've already pre-configured this. So I've assigned a static IP address to my network card in my computer that differs from the charge controller, but is in the same subnet, so they'll be able to communicate together. So my network card in here is 192.168.1.2, and of course the subnet is 255.255.255.0 and if we go back and confirm again here's the subnet 255.255.255.0 192.168.1.253 so we should have no problems communicating with the charge controller so we'll go ahead and close these windows out and now I will execute the Morningstar charge controller MS view application and click on search for devices and it's already found the device. There's our device there. And in the parentheses here is the actual serial number for the device. So we'll go ahead and connect to the device. It's lit up green. We have a connection. We'll come in here to Tools, the TriStar MPPT Setup Wizard. And it's going to give us some warnings. Here's a good warning, I think I already covered this, that when you set the dip switches for these charge controllers, you've got to make sure there's no power applied to them. 
And now we have our menu screen here. So we're going to read from the TSMPPT charge controller. It's a solar charge controller. We're going to hit next. It's going to ask us for the IP address 192.168.1.253. This is the factory default that we pulled from the manual on page 53. And we're going to go ahead and hit next. And it's connected to the unit. The lights are flashing. You can't see that in the background. And we are now communicating with this charge controller and it says it's finished. And now we can actually see the programming summary of all the information that's in there. We can see the regulation voltage. We can come down here and see the float voltage, the equalization voltage. Now I've already kind of went ahead and cheated a little bit and changed some of these. But we're still going to cover this in the next video on how I did that. And we now have demonstrated that we can read the charge controller programming and we'll go ahead and reprogram this file back into the charge controller demonstrating that we have communications between the PC and the charge controller. So let's go ahead and hit program the charge controller. It's going to ask us for the IP address again. And now we are writing to the charge controller. I have flashing lights that once again you can't see here next to the computer. And we're finished. So we were able to read and write to the charge controller demonstrating that we have communications between our PC and the controller. And in the next video, we're actually going to come in here and do this edit feature and step through all these settings here to build a custom file to program into the unit that will pair up with that position 8 on the dip switches we set in the previous video on this charge controller. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the comms prepper with a short tutorial video on how to establish communications between your personal computer and your Morningstar charge controller for the purposes of programming the custom configuration settings in your charge controller. Thanks, guys.